Hello again guys and welcome to another Fly Deck 2 Sim tutorial. Today we're going to be flying an ILS approach to runway 27 at East Midlands Airport in the United Kingdom. We'll be flying that to Cat 3 Minima and that will be followed by an autoland and we'll be using my company's procedures throughout the entire process. Now we'll be covering the fail passive autoland system. The 737 has another option called the fail operational. You can find more information about that in the PMDG manual or online. With the fail passive system, we have no rollout feature. Uh, Sense line has to be maintained after touchdown by flight crew, but this still allows us to do an auto land up to uh, Cat 3 minimum weather conditions. So the 737 800 is capable of uh, doing an auto land of any ILS approach. All you need to do is after you've been cleared the approaches, arm approach and engage the second autopilot. So this, in this case here, at Command A and B. Now, uh, just before we do that, I want to talk to you a little bit about the different category ILS approaches. We have category one, category two, and category three. Uh, today we're going to be flying a category three approach, but to fly a category two or category three approach, you need to essentially check three things. Uh, number one, the aircraft has to be qualified, and the 737 in a nutshell is, it has all the equipment required, uh, but if there was a problem with one of the systems, we'd have to check that a MEL, which is called the minimum equipment list, to ensure that any downgraded equipment doesn't affect its ability to do a Category 2 or 3 ILS. For example, the window wipers don't work, uh, you can't do a Cat 3 ILS. Secondly, we need to check if the airport, or most specifically the runway, is qualified. Now, for a runway to be qualified for Category 2 or Category 3 ILSs, it has to have supplementary uh, approach and runway lighting, it needs to have things like instrument hold positions further away from the runway, uh, things like backup generators, and probably massive long list of things that I'm not even aware about. You can find that information online. And lastly, number three, the crew needs to be qualified. So when you do your instrument rating, uh, you are only qualified to fly category one ILS approaches, a standard ILS. Uh, you have to do things like low visibility procedural training, uh, recurrency training every six months uh, to show that you can still uh, fly in these conditions. And also a practice auto land has to be done uh, either in uh, practice conditions so a normal sunny day or in uh, conditions like we have today in Cat 3. Now if you have all those three things you have the ability to fly a category uh, 2 or 3 uh, ILS approach. Now the great thing is that having the ability to fly a category 2 or 3 ILS allows you to get closer to the runway because the minima is lower uh, and that allows you to decide to go around or land later uh, so you can get a little bit closer to the runway because there's increased safety. Now, unless you're a Chuck Yeager or a 14-year-old kid who plays um, Call of Duty all day, uh, landing Cat 3 weather conditions really uh, doesn't produce a sufficient visual reference for a landing to be made manually. Uh, it is just humanly impossible to react quick enough for that and to land safely. And that's why we have the auto land system. And in my company, it is mandatory to conduct an auto land in Cat 2 3 conditions, uh, which is exactly what we're going to be doing today, a Cat 3 ILS approach. So you might be wondering where are we? So we're flying into East Midlands Airport, as I said at the start, and we're holding at this waypoint at Valag. So if I bring up the approach chart, you can see here Valag, uh, expect to be at flight level 80, which we are. And we're holding in this um, direction here, and we're going to be afterwards vectored for an ILS approach onto a radar heading, and then left onto the ILS approach. Now, if I bring up the approach chart itself, uh, you can see here it's the runway 27 for East Midlands Airport. We can check everything set up for the approach. So we can have the ILS frequencies 10935, which is set active both sides. The inbound courses of 270 and 270 set twice. The aerodrome elevation of 306 feet is set. We've got a land out of, oh there we go, 300, so that's not correct. And the other thing I want to show you is the minimums. Okay, so you can see here for a category one ILS, it's 482 feet. Now this is called a DA, or a decision altitude. So if we descend uh, on this altitude, uh, it's based on a barometric altitude reference. Okay. If you have a look at CAT 2 and CAT 3, you can see it says RA and DH. Now DH is a decision height, it's based on the height above the ground. And we measure uh, that using the radio altimeter. So if you have a look at the um, PFD, you can see we have the decision height of 50 feet set and the RVR the required visual range is 200 meters in, which is exact weather we have today uh, and that allows us to fly this approach in category 3 conditions. Now just before we fly, one more thing I want to show you uh, is that 
uh, usually when airports are operating in low visibility procedures they have specific rules you can see here in the airport information section for the plate it says for runway 27 all landing aircraft must only vacate the runway via holding point golf 2 so if I bring up the runway chart you can see here golf 2 is at the end of the runway so we need to vacate at the end and then we're going to taxi via Alpha uh, onto stand 40. Now in LVPs, uh, each airport will have its unique set of rules which have to be followed in these conditions. For example, in East Bidens Airport, you'd also have a follow me card to follow you on the stand because the visibility is going to be very low. Uh, and that, guys, is pretty much it. We're going to go and fly the approach. So uh, just before we descend, we'll complete the rest of the checklist. So uh, to do the descent checklist, we need to check here. We have descent, pressurization, uh, land out 300 seats set anti-ice is required we're currently not in icing condition so it's off approach brief and fuel is discussed and is and altitude bugs so one more thing i forgot to mention we're going to fly in flat 40 today now the reason we use flat 40 is it gives you a lower attitude so it makes the captain uh, it makes it easier for the captain to spot the runway uh, in the event of an ILS approach uh, so we can now say that the set check is complete Another thing we've got to talk about, which is very important, who would fly this approach as well? So before we do it, we'd have some uh, specific unique checklists. So we'd complete like a um, Category 3 ILS or Category 2 Autoland checklist. And it just makes us review to ensure that the crew are qualified, the airport and runway is qualified, and the aircraft is qualified too. Uh, but in my company, Category 3 ILS approaches are always flown by the uh, first officer. Now the idea is that because we're in IMC, he's going to be looking at the instruments the whole way down. This allows the captain in his seat to be looking outside, approaching the minimums, to be able to see some element of the uh, runway approach lighting system. Now he needs to see at uh, some point, uh, some sort of lights or the touchdown zone by 50 feet, otherwise he must conduct that go around, okay? Uh, and that's how we fly the approach. We've, we've flown by the first officer in my company in the right hand seat, uh, but just to make it easier, I'm gonna fly from the left hand seat because uh, single pilot operations uh, on the uh, flight simulator. Okay, so imagine we've contacted ATC and uh, we said we're ready for the approach and they said, okay, fly deck to sim, uh, the overhead fell lag now, so you continue that right turn onto a heading of uh, 360 degrees. So heading select, and we've selected it, we've verified heading select in the FMA. Now we need to update the FMC to ensure it gives us accurate guidance, okay, because VNAV it still thinks we're crew, so all we're going to do is bring the CI27 to the point, if I go to plan mode, I'll show you what that looks like, uh, it's there, so it's on about a six mile final, uh, we can execute that, uh, now if we have a look here on the map, you can see we're pretty much on profile, uh, but we wouldn't engage LNAV because we're under radar vectors, now it's unlikely, uh, if we go back to the plan display, that we get vectored in these conditions to a six mile final, it would be more like a eight or ten mile final so what we're going to do uh, we're going to create a waypoint uh, and that way we can keep vnav updated so what we can do to create waypoints you can take any existing waypoint and then choose the radial so the inbound course on this approach is 270 if we take the reciprocal which is 090 after the waypoint and then a distance you have to put a slash and let's say uh, four miles uh, and then line select that key up uh, what it does it generates waypoints now it'll always sh show you one that's closest first which is this one if we click waypoint and there we go we've created a waypoint i'll now bring ci27 to the top and execute now that's a little bit more realistic to our accurate track mileage and now if we go back to the map display you can see uh, that it's provided some quite accurate guidance there and now we're just going to maintain flight level 80 until v now stop, uh, starts telling us to set All right, so now Veen have has uh, started going below us. We'd now request descent to the like flight deck to sim, uh, request descent to East Midlands approach. And they've told us flight deck to sim. You can now descend to altitude 3,000 feet on the local QNH of 1025. So 3,000 feet is set. Set the local QNH of 1025. We'll go level change, and we'll just go to 250 knots. Okay, because if you go to the descent page, you can see here our target speeds at 250, and that will help us recapture the profile. So 8,300 for descending to altitude 3,000 feet. We have no flags and the standby altimeter is now set. Okay, 1025. 
So now we're descending, uh, we can get a heading adjustment so it wouldn't get affected like this, for example. So imagine we've been told to go on a radar heading of 0, 2, 0 degrees, which is very likely to happen in the airport like this when it's airport to get us back onto profile. Now we can continue and do the approach checklist, okay? So uh, to do the approach checklist, we check the frequencies. We've got 10935 set twice. Uh, we've got the fixed rings in for the approach for runway 27. So if I bring up the fixed display, we've got uh, a 10 mile ring for flat 1 and flat 5 for gear down flat 15. Uh, we have the identification for the ILS, the Indio Echo Mic Echo, and the first officer does as well, Indio Echo Mic Echo. And we also have the NDB Echo Mic Echo. So if you have a look at the approach chart again, you can see at a distance of 4.1 miles we pass the NDB, which is now tuned. Uh, we have the standby instruments are set so we can arm the approach and we have the inbound courses of 270 and 270 and we can now complete the approach checklist okay so we can have a look here altimeters and instruments are set and cross-checked and approach aids checked and set the approach checklist is complete so now we're in uh, cloud uh, we need to make sure the temperature is above 10 degrees so it's not it's two so we are in icing conditions so we need to turn on the engine anti-ice so move the start switches to Continuous, turn on the engine anti ice. Okay. Icing conditions is whenever the tat is below 10 degrees and you're in physical moisture. So there you can see we have the tyre indications now the engine anti ice is on. So we are descending in level change still, it's doing a good job. VNAV profile is very accurate and we just continuously update this uh, on the approach to make sure we have the accurate guidance. So we'll execute that again. Uh, profile hasn't changed that much at all. So we're just going to maintain this heading until I get myself a, a final inset heading by ATC. So at some point, uh, that'll give us that final heading and then we we'll contact tower as well. So here's a nice little trick as well. If you arm the standby approach and use this in real life, uh, when you're not within 90 degrees of the inset, you get no glide path indication. But if you look at the standby um, ISFD, you do get a glide path information. So you can actually use that to help judge whether you're going to be on the ILS approach or not. Okay. So it's looking quite good. We're descending. We're currently going away from the runway. VNAV saying was slightly high. Now we're also approaching the decel point. So now we're going to bug the up speed initially, uh, which is about 205 knots, I think. Just bug that there. There we go. 206. Okay. Now the aircraft and level change will pitch up and descend there as well. So we're getting a bit high and I need to slow down. So I'm just going to use a tiny bit of speed brake as well to aid uh, the aircraft to slow down as well. As soon as we pass the decel point, that profile is going to start going back up uh, towards us. Keep updating the FMC, so go back towards that point. Remember, whenever you're under radar vector, it's a really good idea to keep doing that. And now the profile, went, there we go, so starting to get back onto profile. And if we look at the standby uh, ISFD, you can see the glide marks bang on. Okay, so it's looking pretty good on the approach. Excellent. So we'll do a slight heading adjustment, so we fly that sim turn left heading 010 zero, zero degrees respond and then set the heading. It's pretty good. Now we're approaching the up speed we can think about selecting flat one. So speed checked. And then watch the flat gauge moving now. We're just going to maintain that speed. Actually I'm going to bug slightly back about 200 knots because we need to start thinking about slowing down as well. Keep updating the FMC. All our updates should do it for us. Oh. Alright, so we'll give ourselves a final intercept heading, so flight deck to sim, you can now turn left onto a heading of 310 degrees. On that heading, you'll clear the ILS approach. So as soon as we're on that heading now, uh, the glide path will come alive within 90 degrees. There it is, we're bang on the glide path, so now I can stow the speed brake, use vertical speed, and we can arm the approach, okay? So now I've armed the approach, we immediately engage the second autopilot, and now I can use vertical speed uh, to accurately fly the glide path until glide slow capture. Just getting a little bit low, so let's set about 650. There we go. It's all looking very nice with this uh, approach. So that's it. Yeah, as I said, we've engaged the second autopilot now. The auto land system is armed. Okay, so everything is ready uh, for that. Uh, I want to start slowing down a bit more, so I'm going to select flat five. Bug the five speed a bit fast still, so I'm just going to use speed brake to help decelerate the aircraft a bit more. And then because we're now below 210 knots, I can use flat 10 and that will aid deceleration as well. Excellent. 
So there's no need to keep updating the FMC now, it's all looking good, but uh, we'll do just to tidy it up so it looks pretty. There we go, so now the ND is looking good. Getting slightly above the glide now, so we're just going to increase our rate of descent to about 800 feet per minute. Don't want to get too high. Let's go to about 900. Here comes the localizer, here comes the glide path. Four lock capture. Uh, we can now match the runway heading, which is 270. For some reason, it's changed to 271. I think that's PMDG, uh, but it's still working. And then we set the missed approach altitude, which is still 3,000 feet checked. Oh, and my flight simulator stopped working, so bear with me, and I'll reset that in a second. So, sorry about that, guys. I'm sure you all received the Microsoft flight simulator has stopped working message I've reloaded the sim and put us exactly where we were before uh, flap 10 established on the ILS uh, both command A and B is engaged and we're now ready to conduct the water land approaching cat 3 minimum conditions so uh, imagine we've contacted towers so a flight deck to sim we're established on the cat 3 ILS from weight 27 and then come back flight deck to sim you are cleared to land as we turn all the forward face landing lights on and the surface wind is 2705 knots that's it, we can now fly this like any other normal Category 1 ILS approach, except there's a few more additional call-outs, a few more FMA annunciations, which you won't usually see on a normal ILS approach. So we keep it as it, as it is, uh, we're at flap 10, it's holding the speed nicely, at the flap 10 speed, a little bit of thrust up there. Now at 2,500 uh, 2, feet, sorry, the radio altimeter becomes alive, uh, and then it starts counting down. When we get to 1,000 feet altitude, this will turn into a dial, a little 50 feet RA symbol uh, will be represented by a little <coughs> a green triangle to, to show us where the minimums are. Now remember on this approach it's completely flown by the first officer so he'd be guarding the controls and just looking at the instruments throughout the entire approach. The captain will be looking outside especially as we approach minimums looking for the approach lights, uh, the runway, the touchdown zone. Basically so at 50 feet he can call land or go around based on the visual uh, so we'll just stay in the left hand seat to keep it easier uh, and as because flight sims a single pilot operation approaching five miles we can start configuring for landing so gear down flap 50 we'll do a landing checklist of flaps so uh, match the speed as well so start switches we check there and continue so they already are because you have the engine anti ice on recall we then check speed brake is armed with the green light landing gear down with three green order break is one set now we're holding at flaps now we need to get flap 40 out but if you look at the flap 40 placard speed it's 162 knots we're doing 160 so let's just go for flap 25 initially match the speed as soon as we're below 162 we can select the landing flap 40 and, then v and set vref plus five okay and we need to have flap 40 by the top of the white arc which we left it a little bit late we are stabilized so flaps we can now uh, check with sets so we've got 40 required uh, 40 set with the green lights uh, here and the landing lights uh, they are on and the landing checklist has been complete so uh, a few more things you might have noticed that have enunciated uh, single channel has changed to command as the second order pilots now become coupled uh, to the flight controls we have flare enunciated as well so the system is armed ready for the auto land that. Below a thousand feet RO, we now have this digital dial uh, to represent the um, closure rate uh, approaching the ground. So it's a little bit easier to read. Now, you probably saw my other approaches. We have a 500 continue, 500 go around at the top of the uh, amber band. It's a little bit different with an automatic approach. We need to verify the radio altimeter and flares enunciated with the first officer. So, continuing going down the approach, monitoring the systems. And as we approach 500 feet of radio altimeter, a very specific call is made by the captain. Now, as it comes here, he'd say 500 radio, flare is armed, and the first officer would say whatever he says. So passing 410 feet radio, flare is armed as well. Now, you can hear the nose wheel trimming. That automatically trims nose um, uh, up to the anticipation of the auto land. And as we approach 200 feet RA, the captain's looking outside any visual clues we can see the ground coming and there's the approach light so it's likely we can call land at minimums Minimums. so land and the auto lands committed the captain's taking control of the aircraft monitoring the auto land 
And there's the touchdown. You then disconnect the autopilot and order throttle, derotate the nose, and then we can select reverse thrust. So I'm just gonna go idle reverse and I'm approaching 100 knots. I've already disengaged the auto brake because it's mandatory to use it in my company. We need to get all the way to the end of the runway uh, because we need to, to vacate at the end. So uh, disengage the auto brake. Just using idle reverse in the event of us having to set, select full reverse first or second attempt, we can do it quickly. Got a master caution, which will be the reverses. It always seems to happen with PMDG when you select idle reverse. Just rolling on to the end there. So we would have called 100 knots, 80 knots, 60 knots. Now the first officer will be getting the uh, taxiway chart out. We'll just have to verify the routing at this point. The captain will taxi. Coming to the end of the runway, but remember, Golf 2 isn't this exit here. It's the next exit there. So if I bring up the approach chart again, uh, sorry, the taxiway and runway chart, you can see uh, Golf 2 is the end of the runway. So we're now on the uh, displace threshold for zero 09 and now we're approaching the exit we can start manually braking to make that cancel reverse and there we go navigating the runway the captain will turn off the weather radar stow the speed brake and he will turn off the forward facing lights landing and retracks and then he would taxi so imagine flight date to sim you can contact east Midlands ground at 117 now contacted them and they've told us to taxi uh, via Alpha uh, turn right in November expecting stand 40. So the first officer would write the taxiway instructions in the scratch pad and in uh, low visibility procedures he can't do anything except look at the chart and to monitor the captain's taxi. And just before I do that, this should usually be done whilst moving, I'm just going to do the first officer's float. I've already done the captain so I'll just set the parking brakes so we don't move anywhere. First officer would put the transponder to out of select the flaps to upset four units of nose of tree put the order brake to off on the system page to check the systems flight director switches both to off so 3100 or the mcp altitude plus 100 feet set the is speed to 100 knots turn off the engine anti-ice because we're not in freezing conditions only icing conditions and the uh, start switch is to off as well and last but not least turn the probes off as well and now we can taxi on to stand so the master caution that will be because of the probes being turned off so we can clear that fault there and now we can taxi on to stand so as i was just saying uh, earlier uh, lvps or taxiing and low visibility procedures is a big threat to the operation uh, you can get fog which is even thicker than what i've got set here which is 200 meters and it's vital that we are following the airport's LVP procedure as uh, so we check the approach chart which you saw uh, before we flew the approach to verify what we have to do on the ground so uh, you might have noticed that it said in East Midlands if the visibility is less than 300 meters you'd have to have a follow me car uh, put you on stand but we can't program that into flight simulator obviously uh, you can taxi up to 30 knots that's the maximum taxiway sp uh, speed in my company so we're just approaching 30 knots now and then we can get on to stand <coughs> right, the sharp is no more than 30. Now, can now turn on the APU to put the bar can stand very short. Uh, this is what we call the traffic womble. Uh, they're moody people. Uh, we don't usually wave at them, uh, they're not very nice uh, people. <laughs> they're all right. Uh, but we would wave at anyone uh, if there were some spotters there, which there usually is at so we give them a friendly wave. Excellent, so we keep on taxiing forward. And the first right is onto general aviation parking. Next right will be November, and then we're going to park on stand 40, which is the first on the left. Alrighty, so to start braking now, here's November. Right. And now we're in the apron, the maximum taxi speed is at 15 knots, and here's stand 40. Um, just check the APU how that's going on. Still starting nicely. There we go. It's a good timing. APU's now on the bus. And here's stamp 40. You can see the number on the ground. So we check left. Now, in real life, you'd have to have a marshal on stand or the uh, guidance, stand guidance, uh, to get on the stand as well. That's not on the flight sim. Good. Now we're there. Slow up taxi speed down. Now, the first officer taxiing here because there's an aircraft on the right. The top's an aircraft. 
he'd be looking out the right window, verifying that we had some, uh, sufficient clearance. Whoop, can't do that, I have to do that as an external view. But he'd be looking out the right wing, making sure the wingtip is well clear. Keep taxiing forward. Oh look, the bus has arrived to pick up the passengers just on time. It's excellent. And we can bring it to a stop there. So we'll just do a transit shutdown checklist. So now the parking brake is set. We'll verify we've got two blues and one red. The parking brake is set. Pick up the engine display and start and just cut off. Straight away we'd move the seatbelt sign to off and the captain would do a, a PA. Uh, cabin crew disarm slides, open doors, ladies and gel gentlemen, welcome to East Midlands Airport. And now we'd set to 2000. And then stand by on the transponder. Just the transit shutdown checklist, so uh, open the isolation valve in preparation for the next flight. Uh, the captain would have turned off the turn off the taxi lights as well, moving on to stand. And as soon as the uh, N2 is below 20% N2, which it is, we turn the anti-collision light to off and then he would call for the transit shutdown checklist as well. So that guys is it. Uh, welcome to Foggy East Midlands Airport. Um, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial, might have learned something new. I'll be popping this video into my approach playlist so there might be some other approaches there which you might find interesting. But uh, once again thank you very much for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you again for another flight to sim tutorial in the very near future. Take care and many happy landings to you.